We really don't think this has been done since World War II when they launched uh, massive amounts of these airplanes for war efforts. So since the war, we don't know that there's ever been this many airplanes on one ramp parked this close together like this. So this is historic. It's a, an emotional thing for all of us. All of us are owners and pilots. It's not a money thing for us. We just love the airplane and we love the history associated with it, and especially the wartime aspect of what this airplane did for us in World War II. Uh, but the owners and the pilots uh, are kind of tight band. We all know each other and keep in close contact with each other. We try to help each other with parts and maintenance and tips where we can. So it wasn't really too hard to make a grassroots network via cell phone a, a year or so ago to kind of start putting this together. Well, when we were starting this, uh, I have several people from around the country that uh, I'd kept in contact with that were uh, D-Day and World War II guys. And one of the guys I made a phone call to just a little over a year, and I had, I had some more questions I wanted to ask him. And this time when I called, uh, his wife answered the phone, and he was no longer with us. And uh, I didn't even know. He had, he had died. Uh, in the previous month or so, and uh, he had been a C-47 pilot, and uh, the thought just kind of hit us kind of hard all, all at the same time that these airplanes and these pilots are going away this quickly. It was a period of time that's just unreplicatable, and uh, we just felt like for the 75th anniversary we should make one last effort to, to get these aircraft all together, and uh, that's where the concept came from, is, uh, is that night I, uh, I was talking with a friend of mine about it and, and he said you know this really is this is our last opportunity this is the last time that we'll probably see this this done if you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft consider this Avidine in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities has launched the G3 R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidine Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3 R9, providing the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. This is a homecoming for me. You know, this is Rock Falls, but I graduated high school just across the river over here in, uh, in Sterling, and I'm standing on the spot right now. You didn't know it, but uh, this is the spot where I got in an airplane and took my first solo flight as a student pilot from, uh, from right here. There used to be an FBO that sat right here in this spot and they had the airplanes parked right here. So this is homecoming for me, class of 79. So it's great, uh, great to be back in my own hometown. Well, you know, they built 14,000 of them. They started building them in 35. So for many years, the DC-2 and DC-3, that was the only airliner. So it touched so many lives in so many different ways. There's hundreds of thousands of people that rode on them or flew them or worked on them or were associated or flew them in the military. It's come full circle and it, it's, it's just touched so many lives all at the same time. I think we're about at the end, Paul, of the Warbird era. era. I think uh, it's not going to be today or tomorrow, but you've got government intervention, you have EPA, FAA. We have all kinds of problems with things continuously. The FAA doesn't understand how, how to even approach this aircraft. The FAA knows so little about vintage and Warbird airplanes they have new, younger guys who want to install an FMS and write a manual for it, and it, it just doesn't work with this application. It's not their fault, they just don't know anything about it. They just don't have the experience. So the odds of this airplane staying around in the next 10 years, any of these radio-powered engines, it's gonna get very, very difficult. Uh, parts, laws, all of the above, it's gonna get very difficult, no doubt. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. Their original concept was to park the aircraft in five different locations and then to launch them on another day to taxi back out among those millions of people and try to make a formation takeoff in, in crowded skies around AirVenture. I mean, that's why we picked this airport. There's no one here. We got two runways. This field elevation is 600 feet and there's nothing around here but cornfields. There's no one out here. So if we, if we stand a chance of taxiing out and launching and getting together, it, it'll happen here. It, it never happened at Oshkosh. You, it's, it's insane to even to try it. This opportunity 
is, is extremely unique because we have not flown together. We don't have a practice day. All of us know each other, but we've not necessarily flown together, and we've certainly never done this size of a formation. So we picked this airport where we could put all these airplanes together, and we will have a nice briefing. We've, we built a huge power uh, point presentation on how we're going to do it, how we're going to start the engines, how we're going to launch, and how we're going to join. We brought in uh, nine consultants from around the country, and we've worked on this project for about the uh, last six months as far as designing the formation, even designing the parking. Everything that you see here is extremely choreographed. These orange lines, and you see these airplanes with their wingtips uh, three feet apart, this is by design. We carefully engineered and designed all this so we could start these airplanes, taxi out, and get these airplanes to the runway and get them in the air very quickly so we don't burn them up. So the whole thing was, was well thought out, well designed. We don't necessarily know if it'll work or not, but we didn't know if the space shuttle was going to work. The Wright brothers didn't know if the Wright flyer would ever fly, and we didn't know if D-Day was going to be successful. There's lots of things in life we don't know, but we're going to do this safely. We're going to make an attempt, and I think, uh, I think we'll have our mass formation tomorrow.